December 30th, it's finally happened. On December 30th, the Detroit Pistons finally break their 28-game losing streak with a win versus the Toronto Raptors. December 30th will be a day that we remember for quite some time. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I am your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Pistons fans, it has finally happened. It has come. It got to a point where I thought that maybe we'd never seen it. I thought the win would would elude Pistons fans for the longest of time. So the rest of our time as Pistons and 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 basketball fans that we would never see a win. But just before the change of the new year, the Detroit Pistons went out and broke their losing streak against the Toronto Raptors. They decided to say, screw our New Year's resolution. We're not going to wait for the change of the new year to become a new a new team, a new self. We're going to get that started right now, right before the year starts against the Toronto Raptors. Now, we, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Later on, we'll talk about Kay Cunningham specifically, um, and then we'll talk about what this win means moving forward. But obviously, we had to start off just celebrating this win. Listen, when when you go on this type of losing streak, as we've all witnessed – the Detroit Pistons have become the laughing stock of the NBA. They had become the dark eye of the of the NBA. They have become look, we were being talked about like the Pistons were being talked about in in across the across the world everywhere. It wasn't just Michigan, it wasn't just Detroit, it wasn't just in the United States. They were being talked about everywhere because of how bad this losing streak was. And to finally get that monkey off your back is I think it's a pretty big deal for this team now. So hopefully, the, the hope is now, is moving forward, maybe guys don't play as as stressed out. Maybe guys don't play as much with, like, the world on their shoulders, like, oh, my God, we got to break the streak, we got to break the streak. Like, hopefully this kind of lifts some of that pressure off them, and I think they can play a little bit more freely. And, look, at the end of the day, this team is 3 of 29 still, okay? They're not good. They're still the worst team in the NBA. But the hope is that breaking this streak – can maybe, for the rest of this year, they can play a little better basketball, where they're not on a 20-game losing streak again. They're not on a 25-plus game losing streak again. They can just be normal bad. Instead of being historically bad, now they can just be normal bad, like normal tanking team bad, even though they're not trying to tank, which we'll talk about a little later. But now they can just hopefully be normal bad for the rest of the year, and hopefully they look at a team like the Orlando Magic last year. I believe they started off 5-25, and and then they played at 500 uh, basketball level the rest of the season. Hopefully they look at the Orlando Magic and, and hope to kind of frame this season after them. That Look, the start of the season was horrific. The start of the season went as bad, as bad as anyone could have possibly dreamt. But there is still another few months to play in this season. There is still – how many games did the Pistons play? They've played 32 games. There is still 50 games left for you to play. More than half the season left to play. And you have a chance to maybe not rewrite this season, but maybe give this season a little bit of a better ending than it looked like it was coming, the ending that was coming up for this team. Um, now, the Toronto Raptors, to just be fair, they were without OG Ananobi. They were without a few different players because they had just completed a trade sending OG Ananobi to the New York Knicks. So the Toronto Raptors were shorthanded. Nonetheless, it doesn't matter. The Pistons went against a Utah Jazz team the other night, a week ago, I think, like a week and a half ago or so. And they were without basically their entire rotation. And the Pistons still lost that game. So when you're this bad, when you're having this bad of a season, it doesn't matter who's lining up across from you. You need to just get a win. Get a win and get out. Get a win and get out. And at the end of this game, they tried to give everybody here a heart attack. They couldn't just close this game out. Like the game ended after playing the foul game for what felt like 30 minutes because the Raptors kept fouling. Pistons make the free throws, and then the Raptors would make a three and cut it down to four, cut it down to three. At one point, they had cut it down to two. 
like it, it, they just I actually I believe the Pistons won. Yeah, they won it by exactly two because the Raptors scored at the last second. And even the inbounds was scary. The inbounds was scary. Kevin Knox had to make a cross court pass to Boyan. Actually, not Kevin Knox. It was Jane Ivy. And Jane Ivy was the only one I felt like that was smart enough to realize, hey, if we just throw this down the court, even if it gets tipped, there's one second left. No team has foul. Let's just throw it. Or no team has any timeouts, I should say. And they just throw it down the court. Once it gets tipped, time runs out. There's no chance for them to win anyways, which is exactly what he did. Boyan caught the ball. So even if it did get tipped, they would have escaped with the win anyways. But even at the end, there was a lot of drama. They just need to get out. You saw multiple players drop to their knees. A lot of players put their hands on their knees, look absolutely gassed in this game. And you saw a few players kind of smirking. And I thought it was funny to see that, like, like Jane Ivey in particular, he was – it looked like he was trying his hardest not to smile and not to laugh because I think what the thought was going through his head was, oh, my God, we just got – we finally broke this losing streak. But then also he was like, okay, well, we need to act like we've been here before. Like, we're still 3-29. and 29. We don't want to sit here and act like we won the championship. But I think it's fair for this team to have some level of happiness, like to be able to show that on the court and, and maybe not celebrate, obviously, like on the court, like jumping around or anything. That's a little – that would be a little embarrassing. But to show some happiness and show some joy that you finally broke this, I don't see anything wrong with that. So, Jaden, smile as much as you want, man. Smile as much as you want. 28-game losing streak. No one wants to be a part of that. And the fact you finally broke it. That, that's a big deal, man. It's a big deal. Smile as much as you want. You deserve it. Everyone on the team that played tonight deserves it because they finally broke this losing streak. Um, we'll talk about Cade coming up, but I want to give some shout out to other players as well. Kevin Knox had a great game, 17 points, 50% shooting. Boyan Bogdanovich, 19 on 50% shooting. Jalen Duran, 18 on 54% shooting. Jane Ivey, was not did not shoot the ball very well at all in this game, but got to the free throw line a ton, 12 free throw attempts, and I thought he played extremely hard, especially on the glass. I thought he played really hard, so give him some credit. Um, and then also Alec Burks looks like he's finally snapping out of that like two months long, just forgetting how to play basketball for for that whole entire stretch. He had another good game tonight, back to back nice games for him, 16 points of four of six shooting. So got some good contributions from all those guys. Uh, last like before we get into Talking about Cade, last thing I want to say about this lineup we saw, and it's the same lineup you saw last game. I'm really interested to see what they do when Isaiah Stewart gets back because I think you can clearly see with this offense, when the Pistons have two wings that are actually like a threat offensively that can catch and shoot and then catch and attack off the dribble, attack a closeout, and do something with it, cut to the basket, like move around and are functional offensively, how much different this team looks and how much different their guards can play and how much more their or, or how much better their offense looks. And this is talking about, and I need, look, no disrespect by saying this, but this is with Kevin Knox in the lineup. Kevin Knox has not been very good throughout his career. Now I think he's been fine for the Pistons this year, but if just having Kevin Knox in that role, having that guy be your wing makes your offense look that much better because you have functional wings offensively. It says something about the roster and it just gives you a glimpse. If they had like a legit two way wing, to play next to Boyan, or if you want to move Boyan and then get that guy, if you just simply had two wings that on offense can attack the basket, attack closeouts, get into the lane, make stuff happen, it, the offense just has looked so much different. So I'm interested to see, do they continue to start Isaiah Stewart when he gets back, or do they bring him off the bench? Um, I wonder, I do wonder as well, I mean, I think the losing streak, we've talked about enough, should make them aggressive right now in the trade market a lot. But I hope these last two games as well, seeing that if they just simply addressed and got another capable offensive wing to put next to Boyan Bogdanovich with Cade in the starting lineup, how much better the offense and how much th- how much better this team would look. I-, I think you're getting a glimpse at it. And it's, again, it's not like Kevin knocked to some world beater either. He just simply does those things a little bit and it makes a world of difference just with the offense. So I hope you get to see a little bit of that uh, or, or – I hope we get to see more of that moving forward, and hopefully this team continues to be aggressive with what we're told. They continue to be aggressive in the the trade market to get that other wing for this team. But we've got to talk about Kay Cunningham, who right before our eyes, and not just the Pistons' eyes, right before NBA fans, the NBA world's eyes, is becoming a star. But before we get into any of that, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, 
Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. And instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros, sharks, you pick more or less than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's just that easy. With Price Picks, you can do cross sports entries. They have every sport you possibly can think of on Price Picks, not just basketball, football, hockey, baseball. They have even esports. On price picks. I'm telling you, go on the price picks app, you will see just about anything you can possibly imagine on there. And what makes price picks my favorite daily fantasy option out there? Yes, it's crosswords entries. Yes, they have so many different sports you can you can work with. They have a reboot policy. And for those people out there who have been a part of daily fantasy sports, you know that injuries can absolutely kill you. They they destroy all kinds of entries every single day. But with price picks, they offer a reboot policy. So let's say you have a football or basketball player in your entry, and that player gets hurt in the first half and does not return in the second half. Well, with other apps, you're kind of out of luck. You're screwed. But with Price Picks, that player gets rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform out there with an injury insurance policy. So go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA and use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA and use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's with Price Picks. Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. So, I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. By far, absolutely by far, the best thing The absolute best thing that could have came from this losing streak for the Detroit Pistons is the emergence of their number one overall pick, Kay Cunningham. Now, if you had been listening to this podcast, if you're a new listener, you're going to learn this today. If you're an everyday listener, a first listener, you know this. I have been high on Kay Cunningham since they drafted him. Since before they drafted him. I I am extremely high on Kay Cunningham's ceiling. But because of the losing streak, and because of how badly this roster construction has been, it's been, it was a little up and down to start the season, the first 10 or so games for Kay Cunningham. It was a little up and down. He was a little inefficient the first 10 or so games. But since this losing streak really took a turn, I, what, what do they say? Pressure uh, uh, makes diamonds or something? Isn't that the saying? That's what's happened with Cade. This has made Cade better. This losing streak has made Cade better. He's shouldered. He's taken all the, the responsibility for the losing streak. He's led as about as good as you possibly could have asked him to lead this team in what has been probably the worst mark in this franchise's history when you look at this losing streak. He's been a fantastic leader, and he has been playing like an absolute star on the floor for the Detroit Pistons. Over the last seven games for a Kay Cunningham, 25 points, 6 assists, 59% from the field, 43 points, 7 assists, 67% from the field, 28 and 10 assists. 46% from the field. A little bit of a down game, 22.6 assists, 45% from the field. Then 41, 5 and 9, 71% from the field. 31, 9 and 3, 55% from the field. And then this past game, 30 points, 12 assists with zero turnovers and 45% from the field in route to a win for the Detroit Pistons. And in this game, if you watch this game, Cade did not start off this game very well. In the first half, he had four points. That's something that we witnessed him do just the other night against the Brooklyn Nets. Four points in the first half, 37 points in the second half. Turned up, got it together, came through for the Pistons. It's the same thing in this game. Four points in the first half. He started off one of eight. He started off one of eight in this game. He ended the night nine of 20, which means he made eight of his next 12 shots. Two of four from three. 30 points, 12 assists, zero turnovers. But... The biggest thing that you're seeing from Cade as of late, which is which is such a huge deal for Cade. It's a huge deal for any person that's trying to become a star. Is he's drawing more free throw attempts. Over the last 17 games, he's averaging 5.4 free throws, 88% from the line. In this game, he was struggling from the field to start off. And he got to the free throw line 10 times, made all 10 of his free throws. If you are wanting to be a great scorer in this NBA, 
every great scorer has to be able to get to the free throw line. You have to be able to draw free throws and get to the line when you are struggling because A, free throws are easy shots. They're the most e- one of the most efficient shots in the game. And two, seeing the ball go through the basket on free throws oftentimes can get guys back into the rhythm. And it can save an inefficient night. You can have, and I know people complain about this a lot, but you see it a lot with, you know, sometimes with Joel Embiid and guys like Trey Young. They'll shoot like two of 10 from the field, but they're average, or they'll they'll shoot like 16 free throws, make 15 of them, end up having an efficient night, high true shooting percentage, end up scoring 25 plus, all because they're able to get to the free throw line. And that has been helping Cade a ton over this stretch. For the first, however, you know, before the last 17 games or so, we come on this podcast, Pistons fans would complain nonstop about how Cade, Cade's whistle is terrible. He doesn't get no respect from the refs. And it was true. I, I feel like Cade got the worst whistle in the NBA. He would. Ne- it's not like he shies away from contact. The refs just would never call any fouls for him. I, I just don't understand it. But over the last 17 games, it's happened a lot more. It's happened a lot more for him. And it's such a big deal for him. Over the last six games, or or over the last five games, not including this game against the Raptors, he's up around seven free throw attempts a game. You add this game into it, he's definitely going to be above seven attempts a game. So over the last six games, he's probably going to be around 7.3 free throws a game. That is huge. That is going to do such big things for him moving forward. But it's not just the free throw drawing, even though I think that is one of the biggest developments of his game over the last 18 or so games, is getting to the free throw line more. That is absolutely huge. I I don't want to minimize that at all. But you're seeing the three-point shot that we saw coming out of college start to come around. Even at the beginning of this season, the, the pull-up threes weren't going down as much, but the catch-and-shoot threes, they looked really good. He was shooting really good on the catch-and-shoot threes. It looked really nice. And like we talked about in the podcast a ton before the season started, I know that he spent a lot of time this offseason working on his jump shot, working on his three-point shot to get that back to where it was coming out of college. And now over the last 18 games, He's shooting 48% from the field, but 37% from three on 5.2 attempts. So a good percentage on reasonable volume. You add into the fact that he's drawing free throws and shooting a high percentage on those free throws, and that's how you get 25.2% or not 25.2%, 25.2 points per game on really nice efficiency. The Pistons fans and the NBA fan base are witnessing Cade become a star right before their eyes. And too many people at the beginning of this year, too many people were, were taking victory laps. By the way, over the last 17 games, he's having a 59.0 true shooting percentage. But too many people at the beginning of this year wanted to try to take victory laps about Cade Cunningham, try to talk too much smack about Cade. Too many people tried to take them victory laps at the beginning of this year. And, uh, and the same kind of thing that happened with Scoo Henderson over in Portland, who's playing really well as of late. How about we stop trying to take victory laps on early season struggles? especially over dudes like Cade who have missed an entire season's worth of basketball and is coming back after not playing for a year, having to get himself back into game shape and having to get accustomed again to NBA basketball. That's clearly what has happened this season. He hadn't played basketball for a year, needed to play himself in the shape. Remember just a few weeks ago when we get to the fourth quarter and he looked absolutely gassed. He looked like he had no chance at making it to the end of the fourth quarter because he was absolutely gassed. And over the last week or two weeks now, He's not getting gassed at the end of these games. He's able to shoulder the load offensively like the Pistons are asking him to do while playing high minutes and not just completely dying out in the fourth quarter. 42 minutes played against Boston. 37 minutes played against Brooklyn. 39 minutes played against Utah. 44 minutes played against Atlanta. In this game against the Toronto Raptors, 38 minutes played. And he doesn't look like he's gassing out at the end anymore. That was a huge part of his inefficiency as well is that he'd play a good game until around the third, beginning of the fourth quarter, and he would just gas out at the end. Over the last few weeks, you can see that he's getting his body back in shape, that he's finally getting accustomed again to NBA basketball. And along with that is efficiency rising up. And I think what the losing streak is, so much of the attention is getting put on him too. Every possession of every game. And I think you saw that start to take the toll on him a little bit a few weeks ago. But over the last 18 games, I think it's made him better. He's reacting much better to the pressure. He's making the right read a lot more often. He's making uh, less boneheaded decisions, which I thought he was doing way too much of. He was making some lazy passes. He's being much more careful and valuing the basketball a lot more. Over the last 17 games, 
His turnover percentage is down to 13.6%. In this game against the Toronto Raptors, you didn't see him turn the ball over a singular time, despite the load that he carries offensively and despite having 12 assists in this game. He's turning the ball over less. He's scoring more. He's scoring more efficiently. He's more active defensively. He's hitting more threes. He's getting to the free throw line more. We are watching Kay Cunningham become that star that everyone knew he was going to be when he was taken with the number one overall pick. If this team was any better, if he had any kind of better teammates, a better roster, this record was a little bit better, he would be a surefire all-star coming up. He'd be a surefire all-star. And these numbers are going to go up. I don't know where they're going to end up after this game because basketball reference doesn't have um, this previous game in their system until tomorrow. So I'll see what it is then. But so far before this game, and these, like I said, these percentages are going to go up. At the beginning of the year, so much talk was being made about how much, uh, he, how inefficient Cade was. Well, look at that. After 31 games, and again, not including this one, it's going to go higher. He's at 45% from the field. He's at 34% from deep. He's at 49.3% on twos. He's at 86.7% from the free throw line, 4.6 attempts. And he's averaging 23.3 points, 7.1 assists, 4.2 rebounds, and 1.1 steals. If that was his averages at the end of this season, if I told you at the, before the season started, and I said Cade was going to average 23, 7, and 5 on around 45, 34, uh, 88% shooting splits, what would you feel like? I guarantee you every Pistons fan would be like, yep, he must be taking the turn. We must be seeing him make a jump. We'd be happy with that. And that's what he's doing right now, except he's being he's been even better. That's him having to reverse a bad start to the season. Now he's just, if he continues to play like this for the rest of the year, who knows? Who knows what his averages will end at? All I know is that if you look at his season, I think at the end of this year, if you look after the final or after the first 15 or so games, 15, 14 games, I think those numbers are going to be even better. And if you watch Kate for the rest of the year, if you watch Kate over the last 18 games, if you watch Kate for the rest of the year, you're going to come away thinking at the end of the season, Kate Cunningham is a future superstar in the making. That's what we're watching happen right before our eyes. And if that's what this losing streak, if the losing streak had to happen for this, for Kate to get better, for all this to make Cade better and get to where he needs to get to, then damn it. I guess it was worth it. I guess it was worth it. Yes, the Detroit Pistons won. Yes, they broke the losing streak. But, but, sadly, there is a but. We'll talk about what that is when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, especially in Michigan, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. A few years ago, when betting became legal in Michigan, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what app to use. I went with FanDuel, and it was not a mistake at all, and I still use it to this day. It's incredibly easy, incredibly self-explanatory, and it made it a much easy, um, a so so easy of a transition for me getting into betting. FanDuel is absolutely amazing. FanDuel is fantastic. I suggest all of you guys go over to FanDuel and get started with it if you have any interest at all. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Get that $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet again. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. With, with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, you guys are going to get my live reaction right here on the podcast. Um, the Detroit Lions are playing the Dallas Cowboys right now. Um, actually, they're taking a timeout. We're not going to wait for that. Anyways, uh, it's a forcing goal uh, in, in the first quarter. They're on the four-yard line, so I wanted to see what was going to happen. You guys would have got my full reaction to that. But anyways, yes, the Detroit Pistons broke their losing streak. Huge deal, obviously. Very huge deal. And obviously, we are happy 
for not just Pistons fans, obviously, but we're happy for the players that they finally got that monkey on the, off their back, and maybe they can play a little bit more relaxed, and maybe Dixon, you know, maybe they can play a little bit more freely. Maybe Monty's starting to figure some stuff out. Like, we hope that this obviously signals some kind of change this season. But if you guys have been listening over the last week or so, you guys will know this. I have said my biggest fear going into tonight's game I, I talked about it a lot in the last podcast. My biggest fear was that if the Pistons go into, or not into Toronto, but play Toronto and win this game, my biggest fear is going to be that Troy Weaver, Monty Williams, both their jobs are just incredibly safe. Nothing happens. And Tom Gores, the Lions don't convert in fourth and goal, by the way, of course. Um, that Tom Gore does not continue to put pressure on these guys and does not force change to happen. That is my biggest fear. Because, yes, the Pistons broke the losing streak. Yes, it's happy to see a win. Yeah, all that is great. And I'm not trying to minimize that. Everyone should be happy right now, okay? Everyone should be happy. But at the end of the day, the Pistons are still 3-29. and At the end of the day, they are still the worst team in the NBA. At the end of the day, this roster construction is one of the worst roster construction I've seen with my two eyes since I became a fan of the NBA. At the end of the day, we have all these issues still. At the end of the day, we're not seeing Asar Thompson even used offensively. We're not seeing him even used within games. They don't know how to use him. They don't have a roster to use him correctly. At the end of the day, we're seeing that the Pistons can't even go to their bench for longer than three or four minutes because without the game completely ending. We have seen, we, at the end of the day, we are still seeing the fact that a guy like Kevin Knox makes such a huge difference. A guy that was out the NBA at the start of the season, he makes such a big difference because this team did not want to attack and get any type of wings that could help them play this season. At the end of the day, Troy Weaver still had a failure of an offseason. At the end of the day, Troy Weaver still has had a failure of a season. At the end of the day, Monty Williams still has not had a good season. At the end of the day, Monty Williams still has done multiple questionable things this year. And at the end of the day, the Detroit Pistons are still having one of the most, if not the, it's still probably the most embarrassing season in their franchise's history. And lastly, at the end of the day, I think, again, I'm not trying to take any, not saying that anyone shouldn't be happy right now about them finally breaking the losing streak, not having to worry about the Pistons you know, being the first the, the, the first thing talked about every single day everywhere, about how bad they are, everyone laughing at them. Like, okay, I get everyone should be happy about that. I'm not trying to take that away at all. But at the end of the day, Piston, I think a lot of Pistons fans will start to think this over the next few days. The fact that it's such a big deal that the Pistons won a singular game should speak volumes about where this front office has gotten them and where this regime has gotten them. So all, everything we talked about to start this podcast is still true. Thank God they broke the losing streak. Hopefully it takes a monkey off their back. Kate is becoming a star. Maybe this is what was needed for him. But things are not solved. Things are not fixed. Pistons are still the worst team in the league. The Pistons still have massive glaring holes. It's still likely the Pistons could go on another long losing streak because of how bad the roster construction is. So if this win, my biggest fear is this win then makes it to where Troy Weaver tries to take his foot off the gas. He All of a sudden, he doesn't have pressure on him anymore. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't lose his job. He gets job security moving forward. They don't do nothing until the trade deadline because, you know, oh, well, we're seeing the team start to turn around. They don't get active in the trade market. Like, that's what my biggest fear is. So everyone be happy with this win. But at the end of the day, this is still what they are. And Troy Weaver should not escape any kind of criticism. And his he, his his seat should be just as burning hot as it was two hours ago, as it, as it should be right now. It should be just as hot as it was two hours ago. Honestly, he shouldn't even, I, I don't think he should even have a seat right now, but the heat should still be just as hot as it was two hours ago. And the Detroit Pistons still need to be aggressive in the trade market, and they still need to be trying to go and acquire multiple wings in the trade market. Because as you've seen, which we'll talk about in a future episode, probably the next episode, what you're starting to see happen, Pistons fans, and be ready for it. If they don't make trades, it's starting to happen already. OJ Anobi was one of their targets because he was expiring contract. Remember, we talked about two episodes ago that maybe the Pistons are really trying to signal, you know, trying to keep 
the fans off their back by saying these guys who they're targeting that are expiring contracts because not because they're trying to trade for them, but because they're going to be free agents in the offseason. They can use their cap space and just wait till then, kick the can down the road again to this offseason. Well, OG Ananobi was one of those targets. He's an expiring contract. He just went to the Knicks. The Knicks are about to resign him. He's staying in New York. Pascal's another one of their targets. He's expiring. They're about to trade him somewhere. He's going to resign where he goes. Be ready. All those guys that the Pistons apparently are targeting, there are also trade targets. If they don't go and trade for them, they're going to get traded to another team. They're going to get re-signed with that team. They're going to get extended by that team. And then when this offseason comes around again for the third year in a row, free agency comes around and all the guys that were their targets are not there no more. And we here in October of 2024, well, we just didn't like the free agents, so we kicked the can down the road again. We don't want to overspend. We still have cap flexibility. Like, that's what it seems. That's why I'm worried that we're sizing ourselves up to here if the Pistons don't get aggressive in the trade market because these guys are, are going to get traded and they're going to get extended and their targets are not going to be available in free agency. That's how the NBA goes now. Rarely are guys available in free agency nowadays. It's through the trade market now. So if the Pistons aren't active in the trades and they try to kick the can down to the free agency, be ready for them to be giving you a speech in October 2024 saying the same thing they said to us this past season. So get on the trades. Get on the call, get on the phones, make some trades. And Tom Gores, please do not let go of any pressure. Or I don't even know how much pressure you actually have on them, but please put pressure on this front office to make changes because going just not doing anything to a free agency, you're going to end up screwing yourself just like you have the last few years because guys just aren't available in free agency like they usually are anymore. It's through trades and then you extend and then you resign. That's how you get it done. Rarely do you see big guys go to the free agent market anymore. So that that's that's just all I wanted to get across. Everything else, be happy about the winning streak. Cage becoming a star. All this, hey, be happy tonight. Be happy tonight. But just keep that. Don't let that all go away. Everything is not solved now. Don't let that all go away. Don't try to take the pressure off of Troy Weaver in this front office. No, it should still be there. But the Pistons broke the losing streak, and everyone should be happy about that. That's all I've got for you guys today, man. Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We have available on our podcast platforms. Till next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there. Again, until next time, peace out.